Hey, orange one here. So we're actually going to do this a little bit differently. I've got pre-recorded audio. I played the game for a half an hour. Um, basically, there's this dude, Ospear. He's part of the Vlandian um, army here, which is actually bigger than the, our current army. But uh, check this out. We got a critical success. In case you're wondering, the Meaningful Favors activated thing in the lower left-hand corner, that's a perk that we've got enabled, which um, I think it adds 10% or maybe even doubles your chance for a successful persuasion attempt. Uh, so we just persuaded that dude to join up with the, us, over, and he immediately got into a fight with the other people hey, that were in his force, army. Like so, the lords did not defect with him. There's like non-clan members of his that are with us now. Or uh, that are fighting him now. But yeah, things have been going really well. This uh, war against Vlandia. I, um... You know, it's it's been a little bit repetitive. I have turned off the uh, indicators as to which faction they're in. Uh, I'm going to try and just use the coloring on their armor and their shields. And if I occasionally shoot or hit the wrong person, that's fine by me. Oh man, look at that. We've already gotten three kills. And I'm going to give the sergeants control. Yep, and it looks like the we already got a gallant. So I'm letting the uh, cavalry take care of the other cavalry and we're going to come in and try and support our, uh, our people. But here we're starting to get an issue because uh, I've actually started to recruit. If you look, that actually is one of my guys. And if you look at them, they've got a little bit of yellow lining like the bottom of their chainmail. Like, I don't know. It's very confusing. That to me looks like at the enemy, but then we're getting like indicators as if like Blandian recruit. I'm pretty sure that's one of my guys. Um, maybe not. I don't know. I can't. I can't even see my uh, kills on the list there. Actually, no. These maybe they are actually the enemy. I'm not sure. I honestly don't know. <laughs> As to who's my enemy and who's my allies. I mean, those dudes definitely are fighting. And okay, that guy definitely was an enemy. But maybe it was telling us who they were. I don't even really know, to be honest. It's it's getting a little bit confusing trying to tell the parts apart the people that are on my side versus their side. Um, and realistically, at this point though, it doesn't really matter because there's so many units. Uh, we have to really command people to be effective. But yeah, but there's definitely an issue here of not knowing who it is. Um, our Vlandians versus their Vlandians, seeing as to I've been recruiting a lot. I just honestly need to see their shield color. The shields are very clear. It, it definitely makes you understand the chaos of like the melee back in these, uh, these fights. <laughs> Trying to play without the markers, you know? Look at that, 40, we only lost 40 people there. With like an army of around 300, that's pretty good. And I am going to start farming us some um, some renown, basically. I was it. I think this is after. Yeah, I think this is after the episode where we just like got a ton of lords, um, and let them go. I think honestly. I don't know. I think honestly it could be really cool to see how the charm affects the late game. And I think I'm going to try and get it as high as possible. I mean I've seen some people online. Man look at how many people we have in this army. Um, it's been like a day or so since I actually played this. So I think a little bit more than a day. So I'm looking back at this and being just like just at the oh man look at all those prisoners that just got dropped off here. Yeah, it's kind of hard to read that. It looked like there was like a hundred wounded, but there's only like ten wounded. We've got pretty much full fighting force. But if you look at like my companions, 
There, there's eight and fifteen in their two forces, so they're pretty hurt right now. Man, how are you guys uh, dealing with this uh, coronavirus thing? I, uh, I, I myself, have basically just been playing a lot of this game and um, doing yard work. I was curious what you guys have been doing, like how it's kind of affected you all. Um, Because it's, you know, it's a crazy thing, you know, trying to think about this. Like, how can you not talk about this at all? Like, it's kind of hard. I'm, like, a teacher, and I'm trying to, like, teach, and it's like, how do you address anything without talking about this a little bit? Oh, yeah, look, we're at war with the Kuzates. Apparently, the Sari king decided that we were doing well enough against the Vlandians that he's going to challenge the most powerful faction in in the map right now. Look at how many castles that dude has. Insane. So yeah, we're here in the west trying to crush the lords that we've been crushing, you know. Just continuing to do <laughs> what we've been doing. Um, and now we're gonna have to go east and fight the Kuzates because they've got definitely a stronger force than the Vlandians. Man, that smile. Look at that look. <laughs> you gotta hand it to them. The Bannerlord um, expressions are very distinctive, you know. Yeah, I mean, this guy's got such a small party, it's kind of like, do you fight them, do you not fight them? I think the auto-resolve just takes too many losses, so I didn't, I didn't want to lose out here. But yeah, anyways, back to the coronavirus thing, it's it's so weird for me because, like, as a teacher, I think there's a lot of people who are like, man, these poor teachers, they're, they must be struggling so much, and it's like, dude, honestly, I, like, just can't work. It's not that bad for me. Like, compared to a lot of other people, like, teachers, it's, it's hard because, um... You know, you know that a lot of students are not getting what they need. But it's not like it's it's more stressful for me or anything. It's just kind of like trying to get things to families and communicating with families. But it's kind of crazy because I've got like people that are complaining about giving the students work. Um, oh, I remember this. These dudes trying to flee through these, like, I think these are supposed to be like olive trees or something. But then I shot that dude through the trees. You can't hide from me. But yeah, what was I saying? I was talking about, like, the students and... Yeah, like, there's some people, like, I'm giving, like, one assignment a week, basically. And it's an assignment that, if I was doing it in class, they could probably get it done in, like, a 45-minute period. You know? But then there's parents that are mad about that. It's like, okay, um, it needs something to do. And I, so I've got like, it's funny because there's like some people are like, you're giving too much work. And then there's other people who are like, you need to give more work. <laughs> you know? <laughs> oh yeah, we had a lot of prisoners here. I've been, honestly, I've been using this as a good way to just get us some recruits. Um, I do think there is a correlation between the level the tier of the troop and their likelihood to defect to your side like the higher tier units i've had them with me forever and they just don't um join your party and look we've got like nearly 300 days worth of food and so i figured that seeing how we've crushed the army so much recently that we could um maybe siege this castle down and just like wait outside and if they sally out to meet us great if um another army comes by that we can easily crush awesome you know all that good stuff man look at that guy's hair oh he's like got his twin with him there's like twins there it's a twin i'm sorry i had to kill you guys hopefully the two of you both survived hopefully you're both part of that six that i just let go <laughs> Yeah, and I was thinking maybe the recruits that we've got, like, in our party might join us. And it might just be good to continue to harass the Vlandians, because we might not want to actually try and take a city. That might cause us to lose too many troops. 
it might just be best to um, just kind of harass and keep the Vlandians from being able to go on the offense. You know? And I mean, judging by our army strength, we actually could totally take out the uh, Kuzates. And I think, I don't know if I looked at it in this episode or not, but the Kuzates were at war with like three other factions right now. Oh look, these people, they're mad at me because I'm sieging their castle. Man, that's a huge re relationship penalty you get from trying to siege. Um, and then I was like, nope, I'm gonna not actually siege. I'm gonna maybe look at trying to catch that dude. And it, I think that's a dram over there, right? Yeah, this dude I don't think that we're catching, so... We're gonna besiege this place even though... Um, we're not gonna take this with the numbers that we have right now. We could starve them out. Like, it's kind of weird because it says, like, zero days for the food. I don't know why it's not displaying the food properly, or, like, if they're not stockpiling food properly. Or, like, well, I'm not really sure how it works. Oh, look at that. We're at peace now. I knew that was happening. I was trying to, trying my hardest not to hint at it. So yeah, we, we're at war with the Kuze, no longer at war with the Vlandians, so we gotta make our way east. And if you look at our party, I myself have 49, and my companions have 7 and 17 troops. So you can imagine what we're gonna do here. Yeah, we're gonna disband the army and just kind of recover. I was thinking about like hanging out at my castle and showing you guys my castle. Um, I think I do that a little bit, but I can't really remember. But there's, from this point out, it's like a little bit of peacetime, just collecting units and trading and doing all that general stuff, so yeah, there's not too much combat. Just a heads up. If you want to just like hear me blather on, slash uh, look at some of the stuff that is, has changed. Um, you know, I have seen kind of interesting because there's been people talking about like desert bandits being really common down here i think it really depends on what's happened with the wars and the economy like vlandia right now there's a ton of bandits there's hideouts there's all kinds of stuff going on and i saw someone saying that that stuff's tied to uh, prosperity and so if you raid places and the prosperity goes down the crime goes up, essentially, you know? Man, look at all those uh, armies there. I think a dram got a couple people that were w with us. Yeah, I think I decided to keep the prisoners. Um, or did I? Am I got just donated? Oh, look at all those ones that we can recruit. Yeah, see, this is why we've been doing it. See, they're all like tier three and tier twos, you know? They're like not like the high, high tier ones that I'm able to recruit, unfortunately. And I think, yeah, it's kind of like a, an equation going on in my head right now as to, do I want to keep some of these guys? Do I want to get influence for them? Do I want to get money for them? Like, how do I want this to work? And so if you look at our influence in the lower uh, right-hand corner there, um, it's it, it went up quite a bit there i forgot what number it was i think it was 180 and now it's uh 230. that's pretty good you know for this point in the game influence later on in the game can be a lot easier to get from what i've seen I, i've spent a fair amount of time watching other people on youtube um just seeing how they play the game and some things i think there's just like Online, there's people talk about some of the stuff, but like, there's so many aspects of the game that people just aren't talking about. Oh yeah, this is our castle, Garantor Castle, and so I wanted to show this off to you. I actually haven't toured the the whole facility myself, um, so this is the first time I was checking it out. It's pretty cool. Look, it's like got like Roman pillars. It's like a Roman style castle. There's some weird graphical glitch going on there. I think that's the destructible parts of the environment are there's something weird going on with that but check this out i love the lighting in here like it i think it's 
uh, I don't know if it's RTX, but I'm pretty sure it is. It's like the dynamic lighting. And so that's like the sun coming in from one side. So it's not lit on all sides. It's just from that one. Oh, and Manan, that's our wife. Um, I think she's pregnant right now. I believe. I, I don't know if we got her pregnant while we were visiting this time or if it was a previous time. I've forgotten. But in any case, um, between this and the next episode, we should be getting a child. I love that floor stonework. This is a problem, though. You can't sit in your throne. And my wife, she's not sitting in her throne. Like, come on. What's the point of having a beautiful castle, like, throne room if you can't sit in your throne, you know? And I want eating animations, like, for me, my character, so I can just sit in there and eat at my table with my knights. Huh. Oh, yeah, and I, I uh, was transferring some units here. Do I have any looters? I've heard that if you drop looters in here and the other things, they um they level up in here, like they get more experience passively if you've got the right things built in here. Like if you look here, there's like the uh the training fields, which is mark three. So it's like a really good training field. So yeah, if we leave troops in here, they should get experience. It's one way to level up your troops. Um, definitely something worth considering doing. If we weren't at war with, on the opposite end of the kingdom, I would be doing that. So we're lining up just a couple construction projects while we're here. And it looks like our wife is the governor, which is good because I'm pretty sure her stewardship is really good. Um, it looks like the loyalty's going up, the prosperity's going up. A lot of good stuff happening there. The castles to me seem very big, but it should be. It should be a proper castle town. And most ta castles have little towns in a little courtyard, basically, just right there, and then they could fall back. But look, we're gonna have like all these Vlandians. We're gonna go over to like the Kuzates and be like, oh, hey, check out my banner lords, you know? It's going to get confusing when we start getting Kuzate recruits, but I think that they've invaded like Imperial lands, so most of the recruits that we'll get are actually going to be Imperials. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's going to be the case. But yeah, you'll be interested to see, I'm sure, um, how these villages are doing back here, because we've, we've kind of gone back and forth around like Kuyas before. I was debating if I wanted to upload this or not, but I figured it'd be good to kind of show off what the Sari Kingdom looks like in peacetime, or in wartime, but when the war is not in its territory. You know? Oh yeah, and there's that recruit all button. I saw that in some else. They were using that. It's awesome. But yeah, we need to basically, what I've been looking at here is um, with the the f uh, food is whenever I see food, just buying it. Like, straight up. If there's food available in these villages, I'm just buying it because villages are pretty good prices. Picking it up and, um, and we just like never run out of food. Food does not carry way that much. It's not that big of a, a thing. And I don't know if they're going to change how like supplies work and everything, but what I've found is that um, if you just buy food whenever you possibly can, you'll have like over 300 days worth of food. And then, yeah, you'll, <laughs> you'll never run out. And you'll have high morale from all the variety of foods. So I've honestly just been getting different foods to get the morale boost. And here's all the stuff that I've, I think it's from raiding, I'm pretty sure. And so I'm going to trade that in here which should have the effect of also boosting the economy of Koyaz, which is already extremely high. So, yeah, I think the Asari economy is doing all right. It's definitely doing all right. Again, a recruit. Yeah, I would like to maybe do some of these quests. Like, if they were, like, easy quests or quick, uh, then um, I will do them. But we do kind of need to go through this territory 
and get um, to the Kuzates because they're waiting for us. And I honestly, at this point, am totally freaking out because I, I've seen that the Kuzates have just been taking city after city. You know, I've just kind of, in between episodes, I've been looking over at that, just keeping tabs on it. Um, so I'm a little nervous about what's going to happen when we get our army of new recruits into Kuzate land. And we're probably just going to get shot. Now the interesting thing about the Asari is they're kind of like a jack of all trade, uh, trades kind of um, faction. They're pretty good at just about everything. Which means that they can take advantage of other factions' weaknesses and strengths. Um, for example, the Vlandians. They got really good lancers. So I'm probably not going to want to engage them with cavalry. Um, and they've got really good crossbowmen. So I want to close that distance relatively quick with infantry. So I can kind of keep that in mind when I'm fighting those Vlandians. Be like, okay, basically... Some archers for me would probably be a good call. Take out the cav, and then I need like a good amount of infantry to go in and take out their crossbowmen. You know? Or something like that. And with the Kuzates, I'm like, okay, they're gonna all be horse archers. So I need to keep that in mind and probably and there's one of two ways I could do this is I go also and get a ton of horses and just chase after them. Like, just get a ton of desert horses, which are faster. And we could just do horse versus horses. Or we could try and shield wall it. Like, get a ton of SR units that have shields and just, like, stick them in um, all those circles. And then just wait for the, uh, the cavalry to run out of ammo. I mean, that can work. I am nervous, though. About seeing how many uh, losses we would get from um oh look, lag he's um he's just staying at some place I think he's not even in a caravan, and I think I was trying to get him into a caravan but I think he needs to be with you for you to be able to do the caravan thing. There has to be some sort of way to get them to come to you though. I think you could probably create a new party, and you can select them. Um, so I could maybe, um, like, I could theoretically at this point just have Komar join up with me and take all of his units. And then, um, oh, look, these guys want to join me. Sure, we need the units, so we'll take them. Look at all these Vlandian cavalry that we're going to have. It's going to be sweet. Honestly, I think myself, I always enjoy just having a nice balance of cavalry and infantry. And archers and I think the sorry kind of lean or lend themselves towards doing that seeing how they're pretty decent at everything so I think that, that probably is gonna be our best bet is just having a nice mix of units um I know that you can kind of do like X points to do like all archers which is definitely something I'm I'm considering against the Kuzates is just like art counter arching yeah I'm not sure I'm going to have to think about exactly and maybe experiment a little bit with the Uzates and their units. I think, um, judging from what I've seen, their tier 2 units actually have horses. So yeah, we're going to have a whole lot of horses fighting us. But there's also the fact of the matter is that the if you've been paying close attention, the Vlandians, they... Uh, like there was no recru recruits available in their villages because they just kept on being killed by me. <laughs> I think that the Kuzates, if we keep on killing them and taking the horses, they might have like a limiting reactant kind of situation where they just don't have the horses to uh, keep on getting those mounted units. And if that's the case, we're going to crush them because their infantry is not um, very strong. Oh look, we got a little quest. And a, a quick one, too. The poachers is a real quick one. And you just need to go there at night. And I could actually have sent one of my men to take care of it. That probably would have been the smarter thing to do. But I'm also a little bit nervous that they would lose people because we could just go in there, all of our troops right now, or not that many. And seeing how most of our troops are recruits, 
Uh, that makes me just a little nervous. And then this dude wants a ton of sheep, which is a shame because I just sold a ton of sheep. But it's it's what it is. It's fine. We'll just go to Ezbet Nahul. Oh no, Roazia has been captured. Oh, I was thinking about this. That means that Roazia is going to be just a wandering person. So we could make Roazia one of our party leaders, and then we could make uh, like Lossless in charge of a caravan. Because I think Roazia is actually a better companion than Lossless. Maybe not. Maybe we've uh, gotten Lossless some some skills in like leadership or medicine or something. So I might want to keep Lossless. So we'll we'll have a look at it. Oh man, look at the weird thing going out the top there with the faction. <laughs> Like, it's like all white, but not really. There's like some weird thing going on with maybe colors, but not really. It looks like the Poacher faction has a weird uh, banner, basically. That's what I'm seeing. Yeah, these, these archers. You know what I really like, though, is that we've gotten to the point where our armor is so good that even if we get shot, if it hits in the right spot, that it doesn't hurt us that much. Like, look at how much uh, damage got done to us. And we're on realistic settings. You know, we're, keep that in mind. Man. <laughs> definitely, definitely not going to get away if you're an enemy of Rodan's. You could say the hun hunter has become the hunted. <laughs> Made that joke so many times in, like, the Kenshi series. Might as well be like a motto. I should get on a shirt or a hat. Like I've got that merchandise. Yeah, if you're unaware, I have merchandise. <laughs> I don't know why I do, but I do. It's not like anyone's gonna wear it. <laughs> I honestly feel kind of weird when I I wear it. I think I've only worn my, my. I bought one myself. I've only worn it like I think like two times, maybe three times. And I get like a hard time from everyone whenever I do. <laughs> People that know me, that is. I actually went out during like this whole coronavirus thing wearing it and I was like, oh, hopefully someone talks to me. And it's like, no, no one's talking to anybody during this time. Everyone is just staying away. <laughs> you know? Everyone's like, no, leave me alone. I don't want to die. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, oh, you want to talk about my YouTube channel? <laughs> <laughs> like the psychopath that I am. Oh yeah, look, so we got those looter units, and so I figured, I think here I donate those looter units into the the uh, garrison somewhere along here. Yeah, we we're going to go there because we just need to go east. Not worth stopping for those looters, you know? We we're almost there, and look, we've almost completed uh, our recruitments. But they're all just trash units. They're so, so bad of units. Oh, look, 30 looters. That's a pretty good, pretty good uh, snack. Oh, that dude didn't have any friends. They just sent the leader by himself. How sad. The other one had his twin. I do like the, I do think the, the facial expressions are totally bananas weird and, and whatnot, but like, I think the faces, like the structure to them looks pretty good for the most part. Look at that dude, look at that looter, he's a big dude. That guy looked like he was related to me. Because I'm, I'm like a giant, if you don't know, I'm like 6'8". Do you guys ever play as yourself in these games? Like, try and roleplay as much as yourself? I've done that a couple times, and it's always been weird for me. It's been, like... I always like playing a character. Like, a different person than me. You know? But then I end up finding, like... I end up putting my moral compass on those characters a whole lot. Like, a whole lot. I do that. Like, I have a hard time with my Psychopath character in my Cataclysm series truly being a psychopath and a pyromaniac. Like, it's hard. 
Like, people were telling me to do stuff. Um, and I, I was like, yes, my psychopath character might do that, but I'm not going to. <laughs> I can't do it. Like, um, there was someone suggesting I, I take the dog that I had, like, as a companion in the game and use their bones to make a musical instrument because the dog died it got killed in combat by like an alien thing and i was gonna make a, f a flute from it and i was like you know what that actually does sound like my character but i can't bring myself to do that even in a game it was kind of funny you know well it looks like we're getting into the last minute um yeah i if you want to see more stuff like this like the peacetime stuff but then in the comments i'm I have a huge backlog, so like probably eight episodes or more than eight episodes. So just be patient if you do uh, request something like that. Um, I always enjoyed doing and recording these episodes, though. So um, yeah, let me know what you'd like to see, and I'll try and get to it when I can. <laughs> Let's just say that, okay? In any case, uh, thank you for joining me. This has been. Orange one.